Hi, welcome to another video. This one is on finding velocity from a graph. Uh, this should be a review for uh, most of you, but we'll take a look at it just to make sure that we're all up to speed and talking about the same sorts of things. So let's get started. So the average velocity uh, determined from a position versus time graph um, is given by finding the slope. And as you remember from algebra, the slope is found uh, by uh, dividing the rise by the run or the change in the vertical variable uh, by the change in the horizontal variable. And in position versus time graphs, we uh, use the change in position is our y variable and the change in time or the time interval is our x variable. So as you can see in the equation in the lower right, that would be the uh, average velocity would be the change in position, delta x, over the time interval, which is delta y. Okay, moving on. Uh, here's a, another example. Uh, the average of velocity from uh, the point A to point B is given as the change in position, which is delta x divided by the time interval, which is delta t. And the slope of uh, the line segment from A to B is negative. So this would mean that we have a negative average velocity, meaning that the average velocity is pointed in the uh, negative x direction. But if you notice, not everywhere uh, on the curve between A and B do you have a a consistent constant velocity. In some places it's going slower than others. So average velocity uh, doesn't tell you a whole lot about what's going on in between the two endpoints. Next. Okay, here's your multiple choice question. Uh, from the graph, determine the average velocity for the particle as it moves from point A to point B. Okay, welcome back. Let's move on. From the graph, determine the average speed from the particle as it moves from point A to point B. So what we need to do is we need to recall that speed is equal to distance over time. So we need to calculate or determine the distance and we do that by figure out how far we traveled. So from uh, zero seconds to this point here, let me scroll it down a little bit so we can see the whole thing, from uh, till right about here, we traveled about uh, 1.9 meters. And then from this point right there down to point B, we traveled 1.9 meters and then another meter. So we traveled a total of 2.9 meters during that segment. So our total distance traveled, so our total distance traveled would be 1.9 meters for the trip out plus 2.9 meters for the trip back and that would give us a total distance of 4.8 meters. So this is our distance. Now we need to calculate our speed. So the distance is 4.8 meters divided by the elapsed time which is 0.5 seconds. Point five seconds. And that gives us a velocity, or I'm sorry, not velocity, average speed of 9.6 meters per second. Okay, let's move on. Uh, remember, this is just a review. Average velocity from the graph um, between time at A and time at B is the slope of the connecting line or it's called the secant line. So what happens if points A and B get closer and closer together uh, 
and the time interval between them then becomes smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, let's see, I have a little animation here. Okay, A is closer. Notice the slope has changed. Moved it again, slope has changed a little bit more. Oh, it's changed quite a bit. So it's gone from having a negative slope to having a positive slope. And now when point A and point B are effectively the same point, the time difference is essentially zero. We call this taking a limit, and it gives us uh, the tangent line at point B, uh, which re and if you take the slope of that, that gives us the velocity that is, um, the, we call it the instantaneous velocity, at point B. At that point, it's no longer the, the average from A to B, it's now the velocity at point B, or sometimes we call it the instantaneous velocity. Totally different than the average velocity. The instantaneous velocity gives us a snapshot at an instant in time. And how long is an instant? It's really, really small. It's so small that we can't even compute it. It's an instant. It's right then, there, and no more. Okay, we call that line the tangent line. It's tangent to the curve. And now I have a free response uh, for you from the graph. Determine the instantaneous speed and the instantaneous velocity uh, for the particle at point B. Now remember, I'm asking for instantaneous what it is at point B. So I drew, drew a couple of lines that may help you. Uh, you need to pick the right line for helping you figure that out. And good luck. See you next time.